urgency growing and a lack of sustained action from both Washington and the automobile industry, individual Americans have been doing something about our oil addiction all by themselves. I'm glad to hear that. In the basement of a small building on the outskirts of Aspen, Colorado, is a group called Fiberforge, founded by the environmentalist and physicist Amory Lovins. They are making ultralight car bodies out of carbon fiber. These are the carbon fibers. These are 48,000 strands. My team published a book called Winning the Oil Endgame, describing how to eliminate U.S. oil use by the 2040s, led by business for profit, while revitalizing the economy and improving our national security. How? The basic recipe is pretty simple. The first thing to do is triple the efficiency of cars, trucks, and planes. Mm -hmm. If we make our vehicles ultra-light with such materials, we take out half the weight, we save half the fuel, and when you combine that with hybrids, then you get tripled efficiency. So if you're going to stamp a front of a car or back of a car... Precisely. What about that safety issue? The car gets safer because these materials can absorb up to 12 times the crash energy per pound of steel. You could run it into a wall at 35 miles an hour and still be protected from serious injury. So here's the part we just formed, Tom. But once it's trimmed, it can look just like these other parts. You say these things are tough, right? Oh, absolutely. They're very tough. It's going to see just how tough. I'm going to break one of these. Just plastic. Try, you want to try jumping on it? Sure. Here, why don't you try jumping on it on the floor? Somebody got a bigger hammer? Here, give me that. Darn it. <laughs> You're asking about the automobile. This is what it looks like when it's formed into a car park. All the major car companies have expressed interest in ultralight car bodies. But it's the folks at Fiberforge say we could see these on the road in five to six years. These are the materials. I can't lift this. Sure you could. It's not steel, it's carbon fiber. Whoa! <laughs> I'm strong, I'm not that strong. <laughs> Amy, what's, uh, what is this? What is this? <laughs> Amory took me to his home at the Rocky Mountain Institute to show me another key element in how to get America off oil. It's ethanol, a fuel made from plants. Actually, once we've saved half the oil by making our vehicles ultra light, we can get the other half from advanced biofuels like uh, ethanol made from the switchgrass. I mean, this grass can... Yeah, you know, this is like a five or six foot high prairie grass. It's a perennial. It comes up by itself every year, and it doesn't need any irrigation, doesn't need any pesticide. So this is not corn in the United States. They make corn into ethanol. This is woody, weedy stuff. In it fact, has more energy in it than corn? Oh, yeah, and a much better net energy yield, less capital investment, twice the crop yield, and it just sits there and grows, and you harvest it with haymaking equipment, then you send it to the ethanol plant. In fact, Brazil gets almost half of its motor fuel from ethanol made from sugar, and it could export it to the United States. But Washington has imposed a 100% tariff in order to protect American farmers who make more costly ethanol from corn. And because of that tariff, Brazil's going to ship the stuff to China and Japan instead of us. So that's great. So Brazil is the Saudi Arabia of our hemisphere. Um, it's got a energy source of, that it grows, uh, quite natural, and we're preventing it from coming into the United States? Uh, well, 100% duty is a pretty good deterrent. What is our duty on crude oil? Zero. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Mm.